everyone. Mr. Lewis here again to walk you through sections two and three of unit one, which is your introduction to geography. Sections two and three get into things like GPS, global positioning systems, um, geographic information systems, basically the ways that we get all of our information on Google Maps or Apple Maps or Google Earth and all that cool stuff. This is how the geographers do it. So let's dive into it. All right, so section 1.2 is titled Geographic Data, and it says, how do we collect geodata? Section 1.3 is titled The Power of Geographic Data, and it says, how is it used and why? So we want to know how do we collect it, how do we use it? Geographic data, or geodata, or geospatial data, is the information that allows us to identify characteristics about specific locations or boundaries on Earth. So we get all this great information and we can actually put these specific characteristics to specific locations, even if we haven't been there before. All this data is collected by groups and individuals. It's stored as coordinates, in other words, data, but specific data, coordinates, like we were talking about in unit one, uh, excuse me, section one, and then we turn that data into usable maps. Geographic information science is the whole uh, science process through which we actually get all of this usable data and maps. So it's the development and analysis of data about Earth that's acquired through the use of satellites and IT, information technologies. We collect the data using what's called remote sensing, we can then pinpoint locations using what's called GPS. You've probably heard of that before. And then you can actually layer data using something, another type of GIS. We're going to get to that in a minute. So remote sensing. Okay, this is actually how the information uh, gets down to Earth and how it gets into a computer so that we can use these different coordinates and data. Sensors scan the Earth's surface. Okay, the Earth's surface is putting out this energy and these pixels then from these satellites and, and airplanes, aircraft, that are flying or floating around the Earth, orbiting around the Earth, then transmit these pixels back down to a receiving station. Okay, so again, the energy reflects off the Earth. These sensors are able to uh, take in that energy essentially as, as information, okay? And then they send it down via radio link to a receiving station. A computer then assembles all of that into an image or a map, something we can actually use. So there are hundreds of these satellites floating around at any point, you guys, tons of planes, aircraft of all type going around, getting this information that's being reflected off the earth and then actually sending it down to these, these computers, these stations that are able to turn that into something usable for us. It's pretty incredible. This gets into GPS. Think about your phone. Your phone is a computer. Okay, so your phone is actually a receiver. Just like this ground station is a receiving station, your phone can also act as that element in this whole process. So GPS can determine the, the precise position. It's actually called global positioning system. That's what GPS is. And it can determine the precise position of something on the surface of the earth. But you need three elements. You need the satellites. Okay, they're in these predetermined orbits floating around the earth. You got to have those satellites up there sending the information back down. You got to have tracking stations to be able to monitor and control these satellites and make sure they're doing what they're supposed to. Then you need a receiver. A receiver would be your phone, your computer, something like that, where they can actually locate satellites and connect with enough satellites to dial in and determine a specific distance or location. So when you go into Google Maps and you look up the nearest Chipotle to you, distance, and location, right, is essentially what you want to know, you are going through this process. You are using the elements in this process to determine where that Chipotle is so you can get your burrito on. So applications of GPS. Think of some of the ways we use this other than getting delicious burritos. We turn, uh, uh, we turn it on in our car 
right, to get specific turn-by-turn, step-by-step instructions to drive somewhere. Uh, I know I use it all the time. Air and sea navigation for, for both uh, uh, just general travel and for trade. It's, it's extremely important to find um, the fastest routes, the, the uh, safest routes, all those things. It's used in social media and uh, uh, location tagging, right? So, so anytime that you take a photo on your phone and you go to post it, say, on Instagram, and Instagram gives you a suggested location to tag for that photo, they're using exactly the type of systems that we're discussing today to, to, to uh, already have that location ready for you. Also, hiking, trail directions, things like that. There's a map called All Trails, and it gives you instructions for all these trails. It gives you an actual map with directions, but sometimes if all of a sudden you're out in the wilderness and your uh, connection to those satellites gets disrupted, you may lose those instructions. And I've been there before, and that is not very fun. So the last piece of this, we talked about GI science, we talked about GPS. Let's talk about geographic information systems, different type of GIS. Geographic information systems capture, store, query, analyze, and display geodata. But the thing about geographic information systems is that they can actually store this information in layers and then choose, really we choose as a user, which layers to use or compare. Data from multiple sources can be stacked within one map, okay? This is what's called a mashup. So for example, when you're on Google Maps and you type in Mount Everest and you zoom in, this is the first type of surface you're going to see. This is the first layer of that map. But if you click on the satellite view, you're going to get something like this. And these are very, very different looks at the same place. Right? We're using GPS here, we're using GI science, we're using geographic information systems. All of those things are coming together to give us a real look at Mount Everest from way up high. And you can see some of the different uh, splits, the, the, the ranges, the ridges in the mountains. Uh, you can see where the valleys are a little bit lower versus where the, the higher ground might be. Uh, you can see where, where snow has accumulated and we can assume that those are higher elevations. There's so much information that we can now take from this, this map, this one image, just because we were able to change the layer of that image. And that is really what sections uh, 1.2 and 1.3 are all about. Well, I hope that showed you some of the cool stuff about uh, geodata and, and geographic information systems and GI science and GPS and all that cool stuff. I know you use a lot of this in your daily lives anyway, so it's kind of fun to see how we actually get this information. We take it for granted so much, but there are so many people and technologies uh, that over time have developed and, and worked really hard uh, to get to the, the place we are today where you can just go on your phone in an instant and, and find that nearest Chipotle so you can go get that delicious guacamole. So I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing a little bit about how we get all that information on our phones and our computers or in our cars or whatever it might be. We're going to be using that a lot throughout the semester and throughout the rest of the year and referencing back to it. So uh, keep it in mind as we move forward. Thanks. See you next time.